Mesdames et Messieurs, the greatest festival of our contemporary society, the Olympic Games, is about to begin. This is going to be close. Oh! They're all completely gassed! They've given it everything on the global bucket! Oh, yeah! Oh! Oh! Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant! But that is an Olympic champion. Ready? Bonjour and welcome to day six of the Paris 2024 Olympics on Keep the Flame Alive, the podcast for fans of the Olympics and Paralympics. I'm your host, Jill Jarris, coming to you from the Paris Media Center, joined as always by my lovely co-host, Alison Brown. Alison, bonjour, how are you? Je suis mal. I am really sorry to hear that. I'm very, very sorry to hear that, but luckily for you, we have a third person with us tonight. Bonjour, contributor Ben has joined us. Bonjour, Ben. Comment ça va? Bonsoir. <laughs> and I'm going to apologize to Meredith because she's going to blame me for you being sick because I didn't make you eat and sleep. I've been castigated for <laughs> not making sure that you're eating and sleeping. And Wait, Did you sleep in today? Because I, I would left. You were sleeping when I left. Yes, I slept a little bit extra. Okay, good. Which was Which was definitely helpful. So it has moved from my throat up which is how a cold for me progresses so we are moving quickly through the stages so i'm hoping in a couple of days this will my voice sounds better than it did this morning surprisingly i had no voice this morning but and we'll get to this i went to the pharmacy oh good 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 um quickly we have one correction from yesterday the men's basketball group phase uh usa to uh versus south sudan we had the incorrect score. The correct score was USA 103 and South Sudan 86. We think we had the halftime score. So thank you, listener Tommy, for giving us a shout out and letting us correct the record. Let's begin the baguette. All right, you went to La Pharmacie. I went to La Pharmacie across from La Chapelle. And this, I just wanted Le Pastille de Trois or Trois. Anyway, I wanted <laughs> cough drops. And so I went up to the desk and everything is behind the de- there is nothing medicine e even over the counter medicine that is not available to take you have to ask the pharmacist wow. so we started in french then he started asking me questions about my symptoms which i absolutely could not answer in french so then we switched to a little english a little french and um the one question he asked me was if it hurt when i ate oh I guess he was. Try- I think what he was trying to ask me if it hurt when I swallowed, but the word he came up with was when I ate, and I, I totally knew where it was going. So I got these fantastic French um, lidocaine cough drops. I think it's like chloroseptic. Okay. But they're very lovely, and and I do appreciate the pharmacy and the pharmacist being so attentive. Very nice. Very nice. But yeah, if you need. Tylenol or cold medicine or anything, you have to go ask the pharmacist. Good to know. Good to know. Um, I, a couple of days ago, I was on the. I, I saw the cauldron when I was out there roasting in uh, in the Place de la Concorde. I was walking out and wandering around. Kind of the garden that it's in is very fenced off, and usually you'd be able to walk through it, and it's very lovely. And I am assuming that they don't want mobs of people destroying the gardens, which. That's tough because now there's fences and it takes away from it. But that's where the cauldron is, and I saw it from afar, and I was like, ooh. And that reminded me, I forgot to tell you, I was on the train like two days ago, and there was a a man and a woman, like 20-somethings, and they he was obviously American. She spoke English, but I don't think she was. She didn't have an American accent. And she said, oh, we have to go see the cauldron. And he replied... It's a balloon. And I just burst out, but and like, but it's a flame. <laughs> you have to go. I, and, and she's like, yeah, right. <laughs> I should have told her to dump him. Cool. Meddling in affairs of the heart. <laughs> oh, yeah. Today I got involved between a mother and a daughter. Oh, no. <laughs> what, what happened? Because I was on the train. And this mother and daughter were, were on the train, and the do- the, the, they're American by their accents. And the mother offered the daughter to go sit, that there was a seat empty. And the daughter, who I found out later was 15, just rolled her eyes and said, oh, Mom, I'm fine. So I looked at the mother, and I said, I recognize an American daughter anywhere. <laughs> so we had a lovely chat. 
Um, you know what I got today here at the Paris Media Center? You were here earlier? Yes, we were here because I um, needed to eat lunch. And oh, I and the cafeteria here like, is so good. It is, and I wanted some salad, so I got some salad. I actually got three of the first thing because I asked. Shh. I know. On because a secret. <laughs> Don't get them in trouble. I know, I know. Because I thought I... I thought greens came automatically, and they don't. I and I had she'd already loaded me up on potatoes and pasta, but it, oh my gosh, the salad is so good so here. So good. So I knew we could get it. I knew it could be fast, and that's what we did. But it's also Pride Month, or it was Drag Queen Day here. I got some condoms. They Are they Olympic condoms? I don't know. They're Wait, Paris. In your salad? No. I no. missed that part. <laughs> No, there was a bowl of condoms, and I was like, ooh. So I, I grabbed some. I have to <laughs> take a look at them later. We'll find out. We'll see what's going on. Exactly. Um, I, I will <laughs> say they did let us practice our French. Where? What's French for pumpkin seats? Rien de couche. Or couche de rien. I can, nice. One of the other, yeah. It's better than I did yeah. at La Pharmacie. Yeah. The, the, when we went up, the, the women behind the counter... Jill went first, and then the second one came up, and she looked at me, and she said, do you want to do English? And I said, well, you probably don't want to listen to my French. And she said, I'm here if you want to practice. Oh, that was very sweet. It was very sweet. Honestly, we've been complaining about the volunteers, and I have some nice volunteer stories today, but the volunteers here and the staff here at the Paris Media Center have been nothing but outstanding. Yes, yes. I would would wholeheartedly agree. And today on the salad bar, they had toppings so pumpkin seeds was one of them and nice. i love a good pumpkin seed and then like almonds and walnuts and stuff like that and and you know what i think also the volunteers that the spectators see are also better and Fair because they have fun be interactive and point people in the right direction and that's all you need you don't have volunteers who need to help grumbly press some people who are upset that the signs say go this way go this way and then they stop telling you where to go <laughs> so many stop signs just they <laughs> go and then they go and then there's no more signs but they had uh i was late to volleyball tonight because i had been watching oh, the table tennis match i was watching went long and everybody who was coming in late because there were a few of us the volunteers would cheer. They would be like, run, run, run. <laughs> ale, ale, ale. And, now, and, and they'd be like, whoa. <laughs> and you had to jump in. The, the crowd at volleyball, so it doesn't surprise me that the volunteers at volleyball would be like that because we didn't talk a lot about the crowd at volleyball and we'll get to it because now you've been there. It's I, amazing. I, I, am, I have lived to tell the story. That's why. <laughs> so... I was at volleyball last night. No, you were at, were you at volleyball volleyball or beach volleyball? Oh, beach volleyball. Yeah. I guess that is different. I forget. Yeah, because beach volleyball, you burst into flames. Regular volleyball, there's air conditioning. I see. Well, it's interesting because the hype people at beach volleyball. Are serious. They were. <laughs> and, you know, they've got the song for when there's an ace. Yes. Ace, ace, yes. Ace, and monster block. Monster oh, block. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. at regular regular volleyball, court volleyball as well. Do they have those? They yeah. have the songs. Yeah, it's it is impressive, and they they work hard, and they had uh, dancers when there were technical timeouts come out, and I don't know what the rakers thought of that, but you know, work uh, around it, make it work, people. They did, they did, but they were they really kept that crowd up and and excited and running you know they did the wave many many times they did the wave with cell phone flashlights it was it was very hot but it was also just very energetic what volunteer or official job would you like oh well wait a second we're still in culture how have your first couple days in france been well there's a couple of things that are weird to me like why why don't the French have washcloths? <laughs> That's what's bothering you? It's one of the things. You don't know how many washcloths he uses in a day. <laughs> well, it's just like, I don't want to take a shower, but I want to wash up because it's been hot and sweaty everywhere. And I got no washcloths. I just have big towels. 
that's a very strange thing to me. Out of all the things, that's what's bothering you? <laughs> what's bothering you? Do you want to talk about it? How much time do we got? <laughs> I mean... Well, your hotel has something that I did want to mention today. You had an elevator that then took you to a set of steps to get to your room. Well, so the elevator takes you up, but then the hallway has this weird, like, little staircase that goes up and then down again. And then the floor and the walls are red, white, and blue. It's a very intense kind of decor. Very very patriotic. You are in... in You are in France land. Yeah. 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 So I wanted to mention steps because today on my trip between uh, La Chapelle and uh, Grand Palais, so between badminton and fencing, I started to count how many sets of steps I had to go and that where there was no elevator for accessibility, I lost count at 18. Now you know why French women don't get fat. That's the whole secret of that book. All the steps. All it the was, steps. But, They're always on a Stairmaster. But the problem is, when we get to the Paralympics, that is not an option for no. most of the people involved. Right. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a tough scene. I know in La Chapelle they have elevator access for some stuff, but they're gonna be on buses. Really, that's that's gonna be the most accessible thing. And I remember the organizing committee saying, "Yeah, we the the metro is just not accessible." Sorry, that's just the way it is. And we're trying to put money into buses to make get buses with ramps and things like that. that but can, that's yeah. not just the metro. That's the venue as yeah, well. Well, then, then, then that's the uh, the next story. <laughs> <laughs> so we will we will keep an eye on that when we when we come back around. Exactly. So yes, vol- speaking of volunteers. Yes. Volunteer job. Uh, that I would want. Uh, speaking of volunteers being good with the spectators, they do have photo frames. I have seen them those. like near the train stations or right outside the stadiums. Right outside the stadiums. So there's several volunteers that give you a little Paris 2024 photo frame that you can take your picture with today. I had one that was at a Samsung little station in the Arena Sud complex. That was a Frise themed frame. Oh, nice. And that was nice. But yeah, they just love taking your pictures for you. And that's great. I will they had that. them on the rivers, on the bridges, rather, over the river, too. Oh, really? Yeah, and you'd, they would frame people, and then they yeah. would put them where the Eiffel Tower was. Oh, that, oh, my so gosh. They, so you get the Eiffel Tower in your frame in the background. Oh, Sweet. that's nice. That's Sweet. nice. Yeah, they did a real nice job. So my volunteer job is I want to sit in one of the pink lifeguard chairs that they have on the outside of the stadiums and wave my little pink foam finger (laughs) and direct people because honestly that's all those people do they sit there and they wave their little finger and they're under an umbrella and they get to sit and be very comfy so that one we i saw i saw one of them at beach volleyball when we were leaving and she was sitting up there and i think she was american and she was having fun with the crowd and talking to everybody. And why are you leaving right now? The Italians are playing. It's going to be a vibrant match. You need to go back. She was just having a good time. I have not seen until today at badminton any of those people engage with anyone. Wow. Oh, no. They're, They're just waving their pink Asian. fingers. And I'm like, I could help you with this. Ben, have you seen an officiating or volunteer job that you would like to do? Um... So, I mean, the one that I thought was, if, if you can't be a hype man, the one that I thought was interesting was there were guys who their job was keeping the perimeter lines at the beach volleyball. Yeah, they shook them. And then they had to keep the sand off of them. Yes, yeah. that was it. so it, it was it was almost like a it looked like it was a rubber material of some kind or some kind of cloth because they would shake it to get the sand off and then they would realign it. Yeah, to so me it, it looked was, like a slack line. So it was both cleaning and, and straightening. OCD straighteningness. <laughs> it, it's a that's a great job. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's time for everyone's favorite segment. Toilet time. I have a very quick toilet time. That's fine. That's fine. Because you went to 
La Chapelle for badminton, which did you go to the bathroom? Please say yes. I did. And I went on those tiny metal toilets that were practically <laughs> on the floor, which made me so happy because my feet touched the ground. <laughs> We have a problem in the main press center. I can hardly touch the ground on my feet. So you know I'm, my feet are swinging there like Edith Ann. <laughs> it's not a good scene. But I actually want to mention what happened to me at the Grand Palais. Oh. So Wait, uh, you went again? <laughs> Down those steps? you got, you got to test all of them. Well, no, she's been there. <laughs> she oh, that's right. That was the catacombs. No, I did not need to go into the third ring of hell to go to the bathroom <laughs> at Grand Palais today because... This was a finals tonight, so the whole main staircase was blocked off, which is where that was. So I said, oh, where, where are the media bathrooms? And he started to explain it to me. And I guess he saw the look on my face, and he says, I'll take you. But here's the problem. That's he a was, pickup line. <laughs> he was a very, very tall man who decided to run <laughs> So here I am with my backpack. I had all my stuff because I wasn't going to go up the stairs of death and come back <laughs> down for the bathroom. So here I am running after the security man, probably looking like I'm trying to hurt him. And he's just had a nice little trot. And I'm like, wait, come back. And then he turned a corner and I thought I lost him. And I'm like, oh, no, I'll never find my way. And I turned and I found him. Because in, in the Grand Palais, there's one area that is like a circular room with a painting on the wall. Like yes, I was well past it. I okay. was in the field of play at this point. Okay, so that he, is a five doors of you don't know where to go. That's a terrifying room. I, I <laughs> definitely found my way into that room and I said, which mirror? And it has mirrors in it too. <laughs> so the five door room is mirrored as well. It's like Bruce Lee in the game of death. You don't know where to punch. <laughs> but thankfully, that was, that was not where he took me. He had to take me to the spectator. Oh, okay. restroom which was fine I found my way found my way back to the Tribune it was right there that would have been a much better bathroom than the bathroom of death <laughs> that I went to the first time so but so we're, was in the first one down in the catacombs was the bowl made out of skulls you know there was plaster and stone on the wall I think there may have been bones mixed in it was clearly a 17th century basement but they had it let uh, well lit so it wasn't quite as terrifying but I didn't want to stay down there very long. So the the spectator bathrooms, was it the the toilet truck thing? Or no, no, no. These are indoor. Grand Palais has... Indoor, regular. Indoor, regular. normal. Okay. Everything worked. Everything was fine. Okay. There was an attendant. Oh. Fancy. Did they give you like a mint? Or? No, no. But she did tell me when one was open. Oh, that's nice. Which was very helpful. Kept the line moving. Um, we need to talk about Arena Suit because... I went there today, and I went in a different entrance and got, like, the full experience. Where did you go to the bathroom? So I went to the bathroom in the press center okay, for okay. the whole arena sued okay, complex. Okay, so I was going to take one for the team and use the spectator bathroom in one of the halls because that was the toilet. And when I left table tennis, it was the end of the match, and so there were long lines, and I said, okay, well, I, I'll just go to the venue uh, media center and getting there was like a whole uh, getting into the vet that was like another kilometer walk yes going through that thing but then like you said it was a regular like conference center bathroom with two stalls i had the one with a fly in it that was awesome but then i'm hoofing it over to volleyball which is another hike because it's another different hall is that in six that's in one okay yes so that so is it's way over on the other side because right. it was four and five or handball and they're right next to each other. Right, and six is up the hill a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. So you did not tell me. As I'm hoofing it, I notice a sign that says, more toilets this way. And it's got the international man and woman toilet symbol on it. But each of them have a bent knee, and they're holding their hand. <laughs> they're holding their hands over their crotch. <laughs> international symbol for I need to pee. I need to pee really badly. And the arrow was pointing down this pathway. And it was, you know, trees and stuff. And it was kind of leafy. But Are you supposed to pee in the trees? No. It was leading somewhere, but it was starting to get dark. And I was like, well, this is ominous. <laughs> but I, did, I did not see this. I, okay. would have, I would have warned you. 
Uh, so I go down the path and it goes to the, the toilet building because in the arena, and this is where I went on my first day, I had found this whole very, very nice toilet building that uh, you go downstairs where there's an elevator and they have very many stalls. It was very clean. But, but then in the volleyball hall, every sign for the bathroom was either the man or the woman with the bent knee and their hand over their crotch. It was the weirdest thing. Well, if you don't know, I think it actually makes a lot of sense if you're dealing with an international audience who, who <laughs> may not know the word toilet. But, but usually it's just the man and the woman standing there. Well, I think they're trying to make it clear what the man and the women are doing. <laughs> Well, they really, I guess it's like if you're going to volleyball, you really got to go. Long matches, I suppose. Anyway, <laughs> good time. Well, in order to bring you this thorough investigation <laughs> of the Paris 2024 restrooms, <laughs> it takes some money, and we are an independent media outlet, which means we are allowed to bring you toilet time every episode, but uh, doing so requires a lot of financial backing. We could really use your support in helping us keep our flame alive. You can give at flamealivepod.com slash support or on our uh, homepage at flamealivepod.com. You'll see little graphics kind of part way down that are baguette graphics to link to that. You can also join our Patreon, our patreon.com slash flamealivepod. Patrons, all paid patrons during Paris 2024, get free pictures every day. And then $5 and up, we'll get random videos. And I know I, po- I told the story yesterday of swimming and the technical officials who stood up. I, that video is up there. It's a little janky, but it's up there. Uh, today, I was trying to take a video of table tennis, and I got... Oh, you got, got scolded? Oh, yeah, I got scolded for yeah. taking a video of the pre-show. The yeah, pre-show. The, so press is allowed to take pictures, yes. but if you are a non uh, rights holding right. entity, you cannot video anything. Right, so they did not like me videoing the pre-show. Uh, but look for more videos to come up. Again, that's patreon.com slash flamealifepod. Or if you just want to give a regular way, we take Venmo, we take PayPal, we take Buy Me a Coffee and some other ways. That is at flamealifepod.com slash support. And thank you so much to everybody who stepped up and given us Money for cab rides so we get home safely. Money, money for, for La Pharmacy. <laughs> money for food because... <gasps> what? <gasps> I hear a vacuum. Oh, it's a magical hour of vacuuming here in the Paris Media Center. This is going to be awesome. Well, let's get to some daily results. Uh, we started the day with archery. It was the women's individual eliminations. And our Casey Kaufold lost to Li Ying from Taipe- Chinese Taipei in... Uh, she in the round of 16 in artistic gymnastics it was the women's individual all around final so star wattage power is out in in force at T-Bach was there yes along with I'm sure many many, many, many other many stars soldiers. I'm sure it was packed out uh, super fan Sarah was there as was super fan little yes <laughs> who apparently Anytime her, his mother tells him that there's a, an Olympic champion, he yells to, at them. So he's made friend with Ali Raisman and Nadia Comaneci and whoever's around. He's like, hi, I'm Wilson, <laughs> which is fantastic. I love that. Uh, uh, gold went to Simone Biles. Silver went to Brazil's Rebecca Andraja. I'm, th- I'm thrilled about that. She's such a special gymnast. And then bronze went to Sunisa Lee from USA. So... We have two returning champions from the the Tokyo and Rio back on the podium for Paris. It's incredible, really. And so now Simone has uh, get, is getting up there in the overall number of medals for gymnastics. Well, she is the most decorated American gymnast. Mm-hmm. But remember that the woman who is only surpassed by Michael Phelps... Right. For the most medals, uh, Latissa Latina was a gymnast, so it, nobody's catching her anytime soon. Moving on to athletics, athletics is getting underway. We had the race walk today, the individual men's 20 kilometer race walk. Gold went to Brian Daniel Pintado from Ecuador, silver went to Carlo Bonfim from Brazil, and bronze went to Alvaro Martin 
from Spain, and Evan Dunphy finished fifth. I hope he's happy. I hope so, too. Because this was a big change for him to have to go down to the 20 kilometer and to to be in the top five is is really remarkable right and to do what he did in three years and to do it on a brutally hot day we were proud of you evan in the women's 20 kilometer race walk gold went to yang jia yu from china silver went to maria perez from spain and bronze went to jemima montag from australia badminton I did get myself to badminton. I got to the middle session, so it was men's singles and men's doubles. And I did not know, but I soon discovered, Denmark. Oh, yeah. They're big in badminton. Is big in badminton. So there was a uh, a doubles team, Astrup and Rasmussen, playing a Korean team, Kang and So. And what was really fun is, obviously, I don't know a ton about badminton. It's enough like tennis. I could easily follow what was going on. I don't know the nuances. But I did know when those Vikings were playing, they just smashed that poor little (laughs) birdie into the ground. The Dane, I don't know if this is the Danish style or just this pair. The physicality, because they are such large people with such incredible height, their style of play was so different than the Koreans that they were playing oh, who were who were more tactical and faster and seemed to do a little bit more delicate touch. Interesting. So I could pick that up right away. Thankfully, next to me on either side, I had some Danish reporters on my left and some Indian reporters on my right who were speaking to other people in English. Nice. So I got lots of explanation nice. without having to interrupt anybody. And you know what got me into trouble yesterday about asking somebody a question at judo. (laughs) So the last match of the day um, was the best one. It was Yao Ji Min and Oro Aya from Singapore and and Japan, respectively. Man, were there Singapore fans there. Oh. And they had a lot to say when he won. There was a huge Danish contingent there, also had a lot to say, which was fantastic. So badminton was great fun. And the best part of badminton, I ran into Ollie Hogman. <gasps> you did! I did. So here's the funny thing. So when the session was over, obviously he's in broadcasting, so can't find him until the session's over. Go back to the, um, went to the little baby toilets mm. at badminton and was heading back to the media center. And just as I was walking in, Ollie Hogman was walking out. So I didn't even have to look for him. I was like, Ollie Hogman, I'm looking for you. And he looked a little frightened at first. <laughs> but then I introduced myself and, and I met his uh, announcing partner, Jill, and we took a picture. And Yay. So, yeah, Ollie's really enjoying himself Good. up at up at La Chapelle. So. Good. Well, not he's, got a, he's got a decent toilet situation for a hot day. And really good volunteers. I do want to mention that. The badminton press room volunteers were fantastic. Very helpful. Got me score sheets, got me water, showed me where I needed to go. Just incredibly helpful. Very nice. Not good. Our Shuklasan Baywen Jang lost. She was eliminated. Uh, but it apparently was a very tight match. So we are very proud of her. Exactly. So she, she did make it to the round of 16. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So we it, well done. It's a tough sport because uh, USA doesn't have a huge presence and there's not a lot of funding. And so there's, it's a lot of pressure on individual athletes, but we are very proud of how Bei Wing Zhang did. Also winning today, it's the quarterfinals for the men's doubles. Um, Malaysia's Chia and So beat India's Rank Red and Shetty. China's Lian and Wong beat India's Alfian and Ardiato. Oh, Indonesia's. Indonesia. Uh, sorry, Indonesia's Alfian and Ardiato. And Denmark's Astrup and Rasmussen beat Korea Kang and So. And Ta- uh, Ta- Chinese Taipei Ling Li and Wang beat Thailand's Jungko and Kedrin. And in the men's singles round of 16, Malaysian uh, ZJ uh, Lee, Lee beat Francis Toma Popoff. Were you there for this match? Uh, this, these are the matches I was there for. Oh, that must have been. The it was crowd. loud. Did, did you have the uh, drummer? and the I guy did not. In, oh, in my club section... There was the drummer and there was the person on the megaphone. Oh, no. 
they didn't have that at badminton. Hmm. No, and this was at badminton. Really? The other day, yeah. So oh. they must have different people running the club. Um, and then also, uh, India's Sen Lakshya or Lakshya Sen beat uh, Penoy HS, and Singapore's Yao Jia Min beat I oh, Ohori Yaya from Japan. In basketball, we were in the women's group phase. Winners today were Germany over Japan, Australia over Canada, France over Nigeria, and USA over Belgium. In 3x3 action, it was uh, we had some women's pools first, and then we went back over to the men's side. Uh, Australia, Germany, France, Australia. Uh, oh, so everyone's playing twice Everyone's today. playing twice today. Okay, so Australia racked up two wins. Germany racked up two wins. France had a win and a loss. They lost to Canada. They beat Azerbaijan. Uh, the U.S. had a win and a loss. They lost to Australia, and they beat Spain. And China had a win and a loss as well. And what Sp- Spain must have had two losses. And Canada had a win and a loss. For the men, uh, uh, Lithuania Beatles, 2-3 decision for to uh, Nav. Nabakor Kamadova from Uzbekistan and that that was a tough it's tough when it's split like that I was going to try to go and it was just one of those like oh I just I cannot go out to Arena Paris north because it's yep. north way north we haven't found that yet we haven't tried that adventure no no and there's some kind of boxing controversy if you could be surprised and really right really <laughs> because I found a statement on a topic, and when the IOC has to release a statement on a topic, you know that there's some scuttlebutt involved in the background. So the Paris Olympics is saying that the gender and age of athletes participating in the current Olympics is based on their passport information, and that has been used in previous Olympic boxing boxing matches as well. So I'm guessing that the because Paris got stuck organizing this, because boxing is out, I, the International Boxing Association is out of the Olympics. The organizing committee in Tokyo also had to organize a boxing tournament as well because IBA was on the outs there too. And so uh, Paris just repeated the procedures that Tokyo did. But apparently there's reports na- made about two female athletes that were misleading. And uh, they had been competed, they had tried to compete in the IBA World Championships in 2023 and were disqualified without any due process. And IBA said that they should be establishing a clear procedure on gender testing. So we're not sure what is really going on here, but there's some controversy. You mean we don't know what the heckity heck is going on with boxing? No, but it's. uh, And it's a mess. Basically, we could just skip any other report about boxing and say we don't know what's going on and it's bad that's so sad too in canoe slalom we had the men's k1 finals gold went to giovanni di Gernario. silver went to tituan castric from france and bronze went to pau echanis from spain now, you didn't say the country for the gold, but if you didn't guess, it's Italy. Oh, I'm sorry. I, didn't. <laughs> I think you sort of went, assume. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I saw a little bit of that on the feed. It looked very refreshing out there. <laughs> Was there any shade? Not that I could tell. Uh. Not that I could tell. Uh, in fencing, you went to see the women's foil finals. I went to see the women's foil finals. I saw the two medal matches, and boy, did they deliver. So the first bronze medal match was Canada and Japan. It was one point difference through the last round. And basically Japan held on with that one point lead (gasps) and just waited for the clock to run out as best they could. Then the gold medal match comes up. It is my absolutely beloved (laughs) women foil fencers from the United States against Italy. Italy is ranked number one. U.S. is two. It was a barn burner. So Jackie uh, Dubrovich ended up getting uh, replaced by Maya Wontrobe, uh, Maya Wontrobe, at one point because you know they can swap in okay. the the fencer. Mm-hmm. And this little girl 
turned around, got eight points. And as she was fencing, each of her rounds got more and more aggressive. Oh. In the best way. You know, the first couple seconds, she was like, ooh, this is scary. I'm, And she just went for it. I think they pulled Jackie, not because she was fencing poorly. She was not at all. The judge, and I, don't, I apologize, is it a judge or a referee? It's made a, a director. Co- it's a director. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, the director made some calls against Jackie. And it seemed like... I almost want to say she wasn't getting the calls, so that's why they they replaced her with Maya. That something about what was going on that night was not so, clicking. Right, in in foil you have right of way, right, and so you have to demonstrate that you're on the attack. And there are times where the referee can only see so much, and it's fast moving, and or the director, and so. There are times where it probably does make sense to do that swap because if it doesn't seem like the director is recognizing your parries as parries or your beat attacks as beat attacks, then yeah, you're going to want to, you want to try and change that perception. And it, I, based on what you're saying and the way you're describing how the, the swap went and the replacement fenced, I'm guessing they said, okay, we need somebody who has a slightly more maybe demonstrative way of attacking or maybe a more... I think it also is Maya is much smaller than Jackie. She's much shorter. You know, Jackie's the tallest one on the team and and Maya's the tiniest one. So I don't know if then it was easier to see against some of the bigger Italian fencers because it was easy to see when Maya uh, was really attacked. I mean, it was clear to me and I'm not experienced in watching fencing. She did fantastic. Lee Kiefer was so emotional for every point. Lauren Scruggs, so emotional. So long story short, they won. And I cried like an idiot. Aww. But what was great was I ran into Phil Andrews. He was right in the uh, the uh, Tribune, right in the mm-hmm. seats in front of the Tribune. So we got mm-hmm. to chat a bit. And yeah, so this is the first time the US women have won the gold medal in foil. It is the first American fencer, Lee Kiefer, to win two golds in a single Olympics. This was a very, very big deal. And I understand from some rumors that Jackie does listen to the show. Oh. And I do want to say, Jackie, you are in trouble with me because you were already crying when you came out. You hadn't even gotten to the podium yet, which made me sob even more. (laughs) But yeah, so huge congratulations uh, to Jackie Lee, Lauren, and and my I was did they ri- ha- ridiculously thrilled. <laughs> did they have them come down the grand staircase? They did. Is that it, is wasn't that amazing. I couldn't see it from the Tribune. You, you couldn't. I couldn't see it either. But, but you, had you it knew it was the, happening. Yeah, yeah. So gold went to U.S. Silver went to Italy. Bronze to Japan. The one other thing I want to mention: there are birds trapped in Grand Palais. <laughs> They're not trapped. They moved in. And that's very possible. They may be quite comfortable. So don't be freaked out if you get to go to Grand Palais and you see some pigeons flying around. Moving over to handball, which I was tempted to pop in. Because you were right there. I, know, I was right there, and, and but I, I had not seen table tennis and I had seen handball. Um, we are still in preliminaries. Today was a woman's day. So it was Netherlands over Brazil, 31-24. Sweden over Korea, 27-21. Hungary over Spain, 27-24. France over Angola, 38-24. This was a Denmark versus Germany. Fans were really going in for this one. 15-12, Denmark wins. Norway beat Slovenia, 29-22. I am really enjoying the Danish fans. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Any event I go to when there is a Danish contingent, they are amazing. They could crush me, probably, with their thumbs because they're very tall in Denmark. (laughs) But I love you. I love you, Denmark. Don't hurt me. In hockey, we had men's and women's pool stages. On the men's side, uh, Belgium beat India 2-1. Great Britain beat France 2-1. Australia beat New Zealand 5-0, 
Argentina beat Ireland 2-1 for the women. Spain was over South Africa 1-0. Argentina and Australia tied at 3. Great Britain beat 5. Uh, Great Britain beat the U.S. 5-2. And Japan beat France 1-0. Uh, then we had judo, and this was where you were today. Yeah, we saw... Well, I saw the men's 100 kilo and the women's 78 kilo. These were the table of 32 and the table of 16, I think. So you saw the big boys. Uh, yeah. Um, and it, it was interesting to watch because... So in the Facebook group, Sarah Luna, one of the listeners, asked about, do you feel like you understand judo? And I talked very extensively yesterday on the show about how frustrated I was not understanding what was going on and not getting any guidance. And I, so I felt kind of the same way in that there were a couple of uh, thoughts I had while I was watching, right? Number one was there were two mats going, one on one side, one on the other. And so the men were on one and the women were on the other mat. And you would be trying to watch both, but one time you'd be looking and all of a sudden you'd hear thud and you'd have to look over, but it's too late to see what happened at the other. And they never played a replay. So they had replays at Oh, I today. couldn't see the tr- I couldn't probably yeah. see the screen yeah, from the Tribune. From I, had uh, to, I had to pull up the feed and watch and, and go back because there was one I really wanted to see. But the, the struggle with the camera work was... They would spend a lot of time lingering on people as they were like walking off the mat and walking away and lots of close-up shots. And it's like, hey, get off of that person, get back to the action. Like, I don't need all of this hype time. I want to see game time, right? That's what I care about. Uh, but, But I did find watching it in the arena as opposed to like watching it, as we talked about in the Facebook group, about having an announcer um, was harder. And I took a semester of judo in college a bunch of years ago. Um, And uh, so I know some of the technique and I can recognize, oh, that happened or that happened and that's why that match turned out the way it did. And some of it happened today and it was like, oh, that was a good pin or that was a good arm bar or whatever. But then there were times where I was really confused about why was that a point? Why was that a penalty? Well, don't ask the volunteer because she'll yell at you and tell you to be quiet because she's watching the action. Oh, you should learn some judo so you can throw her the next time. Apparently. (laughs) But overall, what did you think of, did you enjoy seeing it in person? Yeah, I mean, I... I would have definitely liked to have had an announcer, but it was it was fun to see in person. The fans, so the big, the big groups of fans that were really loud in in the session I was in were the Israelis. They were very very excited. Um, there were at, at one of the last matches had somebody from Uzbekistan and. When I first came in, the three seats next to me were empty. And then they filled in with Uzbeks. Oh. And they brought their flag and they Excellent. were in. They were into it and they were excited. And, and there were a lot of people there. And there were a lot of flags that came up, like all throughout Spanish flags, Israeli flags, Uzbek flags. Swiss? There was a Swiss contingent there? Just yeah. make sure that the Uzbeks don't know that you know me. Because then you'll be okay. <laughs> okay. What did she do to the Uzbek? What well, she has and she does. <laughs> I know that's not. <laughs> but um. it was it was it was great to see live, and I I I think, and I was talking with my sister about this because she's here too, and we were talking about how to fully enjoy some of these sports, you have to learn about them. You really have to kind of learn how they work and what to watch for, I think. And that's not to say the sport can't be enjoyable. I had a good time, but there are just times when I wish that I knew more. Right, right. One thing I I loved about seeing judo in person is that I've forgotten that the referees do not wear shoes. 
I did not notice that. No, because they're on the tatami mats and you don't wear oh, shoes on the tatami. Oh, you don't want to scratch no, it up. No, so that's that's another thing. I did notice the V-shaped brooms with the Aren't handles that also crossed. Yes. Very the lead on that one. Uh, I will say, I feel like the one thing that I noticed watching was the referees have a lot of influence in those matches. And I don't think they're doing anything underhanded but there were times when there would be an incomplete throw and so there was no score and then the judoka would be scrambling around on the mat and there was one referee where she just wasn't having it like she would just stand them up she, no nothing is happening here and then there were other referees who would let it go a little bit longer and i always watching it i i felt like it's especially with this one referee in particular like she should have let it play for a little bit longer because people were trying to set things up to get a pin or whatever the gold medal in the women's 78 kilograms went to china's mao Zhenzhou. silver went to anna maria wagner from germany and bronze went to patricio sampaio from portugal and alice Bolandi from italy for the men's 100 kilograms i got to see for the little time I was there, a defending gold medalist, Aaron Wolf, was bouting, and he had won. He won one with his beautiful throw, and then he faced uh, Georgian Ilya Solmondeja and lost that one, which was really sad. Um, but Jolman, the, the, he, he was a first-time Olympian. He ended up with the silver for the men's side. He was a Youth Olympic Games silver medalist huh so you know we we know how the ioc likes to tout how many youth olympic games winners come and be olympians so there's one of them for the the men's uh, gold went to jelam kotsoviev from azerbaijan Ilya somandeja from georgia won the silver and bronzes went to peter palchik from israel and uh musavarbek turboviev from uzbekistan Something I forgot to mention yesterday, and since you have an Israeli athlete, the Israeli athlete got booed yesterday at judo. And I don't know if that was personal or country. So I do want to go back and look if it, when I say personal as in the, the people, I don't, I don't remember. We I don't, don't like know, this person. He's we don't like this him. person or he's fighting our person. So we're going to mm-hmm. boo him. But it did strike me. So I'm curious to see how this reacted on the... Uh, podium for this because we had some Israeli fighters. I don't remember. There were plenty of Israelis, but there was no booing of them. Okay, yeah. it, it you never know who's in the audience, especially at an event like this. But I, I think that it if if I go off of today, I think that it was just they didn't like the way he fought, or they didn't like the fact that he was the opponent. I hope so. Also a nice little moment, the gold medalist from the 52 kilograms women's, uh, Diora Kelejorvova from Uzbekistan, who won on day two. She donated her judoki from, uh, to the Olympic Museum. That was a nice little shout out. Um, also, as part of your judo ticket, you went to the on-location hospitality experience. Oh, you did? So it was Club 24, and... It was, I thought, because it came with, as part of the judo ticket, that it was going to be judo themed, and it was not. Was it at judo? No, it was at the Tokyo Palais, and which is a museum in, in Paris. But they had it set up for the Olympics, and so they had various exhibits about the Olympics, and so... You went in, and there was a big Frieze mascot. There, here's my feed beef. There's a big Frieze mascot waiting in line, you know, w- greeting people in the line. And just as I'm about to get there, so I get my picture taken with Frieze, he leaves. I posted a picture of it, and I posted a picture of that Frieze in the group. But anyway. How dare he? Um, exactly. But, like, you walked in, and they had a store and big Olympic rings and you got a free cocktail and lemonade. And then they had various, they had some kind of virtual reality headset thing that you could do. They had, you could 
you could pick up a tethered hammer and shot put and discus so you could feel the weight. I walked over and I was just palming to see if I could palm a shot put and the guy's like, no, 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 you have to pick it up with two hands. It's very heavy for safety. And it was like, I wasn't trying to pick it up. I was just palming, you know. Um, they had a thing where you could measure your height and your weight and then they had all of these pictures of athletes from different sports to show, you know, a, a, a sport for every body type. Um, and, and did they diagnose you? They did not diagnose me, but I suppose I could have diagnosed myself. Well, you're not supposed to do that. But you could weigh yourself and then measure yourself. And uh, I do have a picture of me standing up next to the thing. But, you know, it's kind of hard to tell if I took it right. And You know what my Olympian would be? A volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the body type that I have. <laughs> um. And then they had, you know, one of the, they had a couple of other interesting things. They had a, uh, one of the jumps from equestrian. So you could kind of see that up close and personal. That's cool. And how high that is. Yeah. And I have a picture of that that I can post. They had a bunch of the torches. They had replicas of the posters from all the Summer Olympics. They had, you walked through this like blue lit hallway and there were, questions and answers in these lockers of things like how do artistic swimmers keep their hair down well we know that all of our listeners know that right and um they i did not know this but apparently at one point there was a 200 meter swim with obstacles yes that's a long time ago yes yep and it could uh, be an obstacle (laughs) but then you'd probably be underwater just float (laughs) (laughs) um what else did they have so they had a lot of that kind of stuff and then they they had food and drink for purchase and they had a a, like an outdoor seating area where they were doing little demonstrations it wasn't athletes i think they might have had some past athletes come but um but they had uh, a guy doing like bmx tricks Oh, wow. little, but in it was just a little like space kind of set off yeah in a garden and then they had a gallery of art done by olympians so oh. olympians who went and, and became artists and so that one guy was a collage artist one was a sculptor another was a photographer paintings so those were all really cool to see as well um so it was it was interesting to to see all of these things and they had it kind of pulled together as like a big party really and and you could kind of walk around and whatever. But can I talk about stores here for a second? Yeah, the floor is yours. Well, so they had a store outside of the judo section, outside of the judo. Right, event. outside all the venues, they have stands yeah. basically for the the memorabilia and the. The T-shirts and the hats and and those things. So I've been trying to collect some pins, and I wanted to get a judo pin. So I go to the store outside of the judo thing. No judo pins. People have been complaining also about the sport-specific T-shirts. Oh. Because those seem to be extremely popular, and now they are apparently no longer available in the megastore. They're only available at, at at the venues, but not always. And there's no discussion of restocking them. So if they run out, they run out. And I guess they did not expect that to be the hot item. And that has become the hot item. It's really strange because the I would have expected at the venue that all of it would be very specific. And a lot of it was very general. And the same thing when we went to beach volleyball. No beach volleyball pins. And... There were some beach volleyball shirts. There were some judo shirts. But there was also just a lot of, like, random kind of stuff. My my sister bought a hoodie because she's like, it's cold more than it's hot. And I realize I'm trying on a hoodie in this weather. But I'm Oh, I could have used hoodie. it at fencing tonight. Oh, yeah. Cold oh, this was, this was American freezer in a grocery store cold. Oh, wow. It was it was it was ridiculous. It was cold. not that way at judo. It was hot. Yes. 
And I, you know, it's, it's interesting because people, I don't see a lot of pin trading going on. I don't see a lot of people with pins and I got to trade with a kid yesterday. There was one kid, he had a bunch of pins on his hat. And uh, I said, are you trading or just collecting? And he's like, no, no, I'll trade. And uh, so I gave him a pin with a little spinny thing on it. And he was really happy with having a pin that had a moving part. Absolutely. You know, like that. And I saw a couple other people. I've seen, I think, three people who had like pins who looked like they would be up for trading but they were always in crowds and i always lost them and it was like if you want to give away pins security is your friend you break a pin out from security and the entire team will be oh may i have one so (laughs) our pins have been getting around the security squads well i hope they start listening to the show i leave them a card oh that's good that's smart i keep forgetting you should pin the pins to the card yeah I did throw in a Keep the Flame Alive pin for the kid that I was trading with. And his mom Excellent. was so nice because she said, oh, you gave him an extra one. I was like, yeah, I just threw that in for the trade, you know. But it's been, it's, it's just been odd. And there was one guy I saw at the Club 24 event, and he was walking in, and he had a hat full of pins to the point where one of the volunteers was like, isn't that heavy? And he said, yeah, it gets a little heavy. It's heavy. And, and I, I said, well, okay, I'll catch him later when when i'm in there couldn't find him again because he took his hat off because it was too heavy maybe, and then you couldn't find him but i was i was scoping out the pins on his hat like there's anything i might want on there you know so but you're headed to something tomorrow i am headed to a pin trading thing but i do want to ask you is the hospitality experience worth money um I think it's probably worth more money if you know that there's somebody that you want to see or something that you want to see that's going to be there. And if you're going, like, there were a couple moments where I felt like I was the guy at the party who didn't know anybody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, excuse me. You know, so you're kind of wandering around and there's all these people and it's, you know, people in groups and whatever. And I felt a little like, oh, I'm just kind of standing here. You know what I mean? So it's more a party. It, like if it, you it, have a group. It is a party. That you're bringing, then it makes a lot more sense. And the other interesting thing about it was all of the food and all of the drink that you would buy in there. You had to. You had to. You buy? Yeah, you had to buy it separately. You got wow. one free cocktail. And then. You, you had to order it through an app, through a, a website. So you would, you would scan a QR code, go to the website, order and pay, and then go and pick it up. They would like text you when your food or your drink was ready. And so I, I thought that was a little bit odd. And I tried to order a cro- croissant, a croissant. And no croissant for Ben. No, they they sent me a message right back. Oh, this is out. And I was like, I guess they weren't expecting people to order kind of like sweet croissants this late in the day or whatever. I don't know. So I mean, I would. I guess what I would say is buyer beware on something like that. Um, you know, it 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 wasn't. It wasn't bad, it was, but it was just kind of specific. And I, I think part of it was, like I say, I was associating this with a judo ticket. So I thought, oh, there's going to be judo people there. Right, but it was one place probably for everybody who had gotten the hospitality package. It was, yeah, it was all hospitality packages. So, you know, like I say, the, the good things were being able to do things like see the the jump up close or... or Pick up a hammer so you know what Deanna Price two is hands. throwing. Uh, two hands. Two hands, right? So, not the hammer, the the shot put only. The hammer's got a handle, and it was in like a case. Did you feel like Thor? I didn't, no, oh. actually. <laughs> well, that's um, disappointing. But, um, so that's my sort of review right. on that. Excellent. Yeah, it's good to know. It was nice to have you on the inside because 
we when they say hospitality package, we don't necessarily know what these hospitality houses that you pay money for actually do. So, and there's a lot of different hospitality packages as we've seen. You mm-hmm. get shade at beach volleyball in the hospitality. Oh, that? That's that, that one oh. row where the shade is. So, that may be worth the cash. Yeah, and I think that it's different if they are at to your point, the sport versus just a general hospitality. Because this was like all of the Olympic sports. And I think there was like a surfboard on springs you could hop on. So that would have been good We're pros now, Jill and I. Right? You guys could have showed off there. (laughs) But... um, Showed off something. There you go. Um, But yeah, I mean, I... You know, it was a nice little party. Um, I would be interested in what it would be like to do it at a venue and see if maybe you got an actual pin of that sport or something. (laughs) Okay. That's good to know. Let's move on to rowing. Uh, In the, we had women's and men's double skulls for the women's. Gold went to uh, Lucy Spores and Francis, or Brooke Francis from New Zealand. Go Silver Ferns. Thanks for saying it for me. <laughs> Getting a little raspy there. <laughs> We're coming to the end of the voice here. There we go. Okay. Uh, silver went to Simona Radish and uh, Anku, Anku, Kuta Bodnar from Romania. And bronze went to Rebecca Wild and Mathilde. Hodgkins Byrne from Great Britain. For the men, gold went to Romania. That pair is Andre Sebastian Cornea and Marion Florian Enache. And silver went to Netherlands, the pair of Steph Brunnick and Melvin Fellar. And bronze went to Ireland. That was Philip Doyle and Dara Lynch. The women's and men's cockless four finals happened as well. Gold for the women. Gold went to Netherlands. Silver to Great Britain. Bronze to New Zealand. Go Silver Ferns. And in the men's side, gold went to USA, which I believe is their first medal in 20 years. Uh, in- no. How about it's the first medal for Coxless Four since 1960? Wow. First gold medal. Okay. Wow. That's still something. And, and I believe... Patrick may have posted a video of the medal ceremony on on the Facebook group where one of the the four just breaks down. It's you know I couldn't watch. I try started watching it and then I started losing it. Then I had to stop watching. I it. think the twenty year is a gold medal for USA rowing. Okay. As a as a, as a, a whole a, on the men's side, um, and then silver went to New Zealand. Go silver friends. And bronze went to Great Britain. In the women's double skulls final B, Christy Wagner with her teammate Sophia Vitas, they ranked third for Team USA. We thought we were finishing the sailing today, but we're not. <laughs> it all got postponed. No, no all postponed till tomorrow. So we'll, we'll have, bless you, <laughs> Thank you, more on that. In shooting, it was the men's and women's 50 meter rifle three positions for the men. Uh, gold went to Liu Yukun from China. Silver went to Sergei Kulish from Ukraine. Bronze went to Swapnil Kusale from India. Women only had qualifications today. Okay, so our Mary Tucker finished 25th. She did not qualify for the finals. But uh, Madalena Sagan from the U.S. set an Olympic qualification record, which was pretty cool. The other big news on this, the world number one, Sinead McIntosh from Great Britain, she finished 12th, did not qualify, saying that it was very windy and the, it was tricky and mixed wind. So a lot of crosswinds really, it, it, that makes shooting anything tough. You know, I noticed that in archery, when I saw archery, the wind kept changing directions and that can be very difficult to adjust to. So, You know what else is postponed for weather? The wave. The wave. So yes, we were, st- we're still waiting for that last day of surfing. So the uh, one has been uh, the men's has been postponed until supposedly later today, and then the semifinals and the finals would be August third. So we'll just keep an eye on that. It's got to happen eventually. 
Over in, over in swimming, we had several more finals, another big night in the pool. First, we had the women's 200 meter fly finals. Molly O'Callaghan from Australia won gold. Ariana Titmus from Australia won silver. And Shaban Bernadette Hagali from Hong Kong won the bronze. This feels like a very repeat podium from the 100. I think it is from last night. I'm looking at this going, haven't we seen these three names before? So, yeah, I think we have a repeat podium. In the men's 200 back, Hungary's Hubert Koss won gold. Apa Apostolos Kristau won from Greece won silver, and Roman Mitchikov from Switzerland won the bronze. In the women's 200-meter breaststroke, USA's Kate Douglas won gold, Tatiana Smith from South Africa won silver, and Tess Schoten from Netherlands won bronze. Where did Lily King end up? I Obviously off the podium, but... Oh, she finished eighth. Oh, wow. Last in the... Wow, she she must have had a really bad day. I wonder I wonder what's going on. Well, let's try and find out something. People at home probably know more from Rowdy Gaines. Right, exactly. Rowdy exactly. Gaines knows everything. We had the women's 4 by 200 meter free relay as well. Gold went to Australia, silver to USA, and bronze to China. In table tennis, we are in the quarterfinal stages. So we had a whole bunch of quarterfinals today. And I went to one of them. I went to the women's singles quarterfinal that was between uh, Japan's Hayata Hina and North Korea's Pyong Song Gyeong, which was very interesting. Big crowd there. A different hype video. Okay, so we have talked about the hype videos, and we have talked about the one that's the 1924 athletes video montage, but they're, they've got different faces on them that are singing Right, so you have photographs from 1924, and they've animated these photographs for the athletes to be singing modern songs. And the modern song they were singing in table tennis was Highway to Hell. Yes, that is on the video. <laughs> There's Believer, so it's like being back in Tokyo. I got the, uh, uh, you're the one that I want from Greece today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so these videos are, they're creepy. <laughs> they are. It was just bizarre. What a bizarre choice to sing Highway to Hell to hype you up for table tennis. <laughs> Maybe they were going to the bathroom in fencing. <laughs> but yes, quarterfinals, the, the one I saw. So um, it looked like it was going to be a rout by, uh, by uh, Hayahita, Hayata because she won the first two games handily, 11-5, 11-5. Then Pyong Sung Gyeong came back, won game four, Hayata took game five, Pyong won game six, and so I had to go to game seven, and then Hayata took the last game, it was an hour long match, hour eight minutes, and uh, some of these, it was so fast, the, the play is so fast on, on table tennis that it's just incredible, and the reaction time that they have to have is unbelievable. Fairly big crowd for Hayata, but a lot of support for Pyongsong Yang too, including a nice little tribune of flag wavers. The little do you remember like in China when we had little flag wavers? Yes. We had a little group of North Korean flag wavers here too. Nice. So that was fun to go and see. And then over in tennis tennis. Tennis tennis? Because it needs two words. Sorry. Sorry, I don't want to discount I don't want to discount table tennis, totally different skills. Uh, in the full court tennis, we had uh, semifinals. Big, crazy day at Roland Garros. Zhen Qingwen from China beat Iga Swiatek from Poland. Iga Swiatek's the world number one, and also just won the French Open for third or fourth time. I think she's just a amazing. Like Roland Garros is her court. And not she, today. Not today, but it was also brutally hot. Uh, Sister-in-law Charlotte went there today and said it was so hot. Yeah, I'm sure. It was bad. In men's doubles, Taylor Fritz and Tommy Paul beat Andy Murray and Daniel Evans. Oh, okay. So today we got a note that the men's doubles final had gone off the high demand list. 
Oh. And I think because both uh, Rafael Nadal and now Andy Murray are not going to be in that final. That's a bu- that is a bummer. Uh, in men's singles quarterfinals, Al- Carlos Alcaraz beat Tommy Paul. And uh, also not going forward is Alexander Zverev, who is the men's singles gold medalist uh, from Tokyo. He lost to Lorenzo Musetti. Uh, he has said he do- has not felt good all week. And I feel you. Yes. So he's doesn't feel good physically. That's a real bummer for him because he thinks he's one of the strongest physical players on the circuit and he's going to go home and see if he's okay he's going to have some tests done and get back in good shape because he's far away from the physical strength he was feeling at the beginning of the season you know what alexander i feel you i i i am with you on this one (laughs) uh reporters asked nadal if he was going to retire after losing the doubles today and he doesn't say he won't commit. No, what a stupid question. Like now he's going to make the decision. Right. So he Come does, on. does not know. Got asked if he's going to play in the U.S. Open. He says probably not, but he'll let you know. <laughs> Thanks, Rafa. Um. <laughs> we appreciate getting that note from you. Exactly. Uh, women's volleyball moved ahead tonight with more preliminary action. Turkey beat uh, Dominican Republic 3-1. to one. Brazil beat Japan 3-0. to zero. Italy beat Netherlands 3 to 0 and China beat France 3 to 0 but you would not know it with the crowd that was in there and you were exactly correct about the height and steepness of the press tribune and the shaky did you get the shaky shaky I was so scared that everything was just going to fall apart the this hall is much taller than the other halls the other yes. halls have very low ceilings for a, conf- a big conference hall complex this is a giant what you expect to be when you go to a convention center the giant hallway right and they've created the seats with so that you're closer to the court but higher up so it's a much steeper angle and especially the tribune is quite high on that angle yes and multiple different kinds of stairs as you have said they bounce when there's a lot of people on them we had impromptu marseille singings throughout the throughout the night and and I'm sitting next to I because I got there late. Luckily, I had a table, or table seating, and I was sitting next to a Chinese journalist. And when these Frenchmen on the other side of me started breaking out in the Marseille, they started laughing and giving a thumbs up. <laughs> it, was, it was great. So the atmosphere, yeah, the yeah, atmosphere the at atmosphere. volleyball is and beach volleyball, very similar. Similar with the songs. Yes. They have the A song. They have the Monster Block song. Yes. They have just a lot of singing going on yes. in general. It's yes. a great atmosphere at that and, venue. And, you know, Claire had warned me that France wasn't a very strong team. You would not have known it by the way the fans were cheering for them. And they had they had some moments. They were getting close to China. China, the team is giants. They are huge. And I was way up there. They still looked enormous to me. The Chinese Amazons have come to play volleyball. They were unreal. Also, I did see the break-in boys dance troupe whatever there's different dance troops at different events i had a break-in troupe at fencing tonight as well so i think they're sort of traveling around venues and i had my bomber jacket girls yesterday so these were men and they did do some break dancing it was a just you know kind of hip-hoppy but they wore the same flat caps that the 1924 medalists wear so it was just kind of like these are men from another era and then suddenly they're breakdancing. <laughs> and it goes with the hype videos where they have the 1924 athletes singing Highway to Hell. <laughs> so, yes, I'm, I'm very, that was a fun experience. I would love to see more volleyball, to be quite honest, because the, the Gerfler floor looked good, even though I know early on. There were some issues. Some issues with the, the rings decal and the, the Marianne decal. So it sounds like they've made whatever repair and adjustment yes. to adhesive yes. that they needed to make. But it is lovely looking, and it's just so exciting to watch volleyball live. Oh, maybe I'll go see some men's, get a little action on both sides of the, the table. Uh, and, and I would say in that hall and generally in Arena Sud, they've got a lot of spectator stuff. That whole area is 
like what I think of when I think of Olympic venues. These huge things are all together, a lot of sports all together. And going people, on at the same time. Yes, a lot of people going back and forth, getting to do a whole lot of stuff. It just felt very festive. And the store there is quite big. Yes, they do have a big store. So that that I would recommend trying to get something. Weightlifting will be there apparently later on. So uh, there are chances to go hang out at Arena Sud. And finally, we've got water polo action in men's preliminary rounds. USA lost to Greece, 13-11. Oh, welcome back, humors. Uh, Spain beat Serbia, 15-11. Australia beat France, 9-8. Italy beat Montenegro, 11-9. Croatia beat Romania, 11-8. And Hungary beat Japan, 17-10. to It's been a big day. I'm tired. Yeah. And now I can't breathe, and I sound crappy, so I apologize. It's okay. but You know, you know what would make me feel better? A puppy? A puppy. Our puppy. Our mascot this week is Serendipity. Her mom, Amy, shared some great video with us of Serendipity going on a hike. Oh. And apparently, Serendipity likes horses. Very to nice. which I say, dogs and equestrian. I see a mashup coming. So thank you very much to Amy for both sharing serendipity with us and for supporting our Kickstarter campaign that got us to Paris. Right. How are we doing on the medal count? So Ben Waterworth and I, so from uh, off the podium, we sort of decided that we're going to have a little competition as to OTP guests versus Shuk Flastanis. So we came up with the decision today that medals for team events if you have more than one person on the team you count them individually oh so we have so we got four gold medals today nice. from the women's fencers <laughs> which means we have five golds two silvers three bronze still nine and a half at the country table uh, between korea and canada very nice all right shook Lestan will be in action tomorrow Casey Kaufhold will compete in the mixed team event in archery. Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes continue preliminary pay- play in beach volleyball. Why don't you hop in here? No? You don't? Cam Wood and Elise Willoughby will race in the semis, and we hope the finals in BMX racing. Michelle Sexer goes for gold in women's lightweight double skulls. Team USA faces France in 3x3 basketball. And the USA women's water polo team also plays France. And don't forget, if wrestling is coming up, and if you want to prepare, you should get Jason the dulcet tones of Jason Bryan's Wrestling Guide. It is a 93-page spectacular, no ads, just 93 pages of nonstop information. Uh, you can get your copy at matttalkonline.com slash Paris and save $5 by using the discount code FLAMEALIVE. So get your paws on that and get ready to get into the wrestling tournament soon. And that is going to do it for this episode. A special thank you to our researcher, Annalie Dable. And to get in touch with us while we are here in Paris, you can find us on X, YouTube, and Instagram at Flame Alive Pod. Send us an email at flamealivepod at gmail.com. Call or text us at 208 352 6348. That's 208 Flame It. Chat with us and other fans on our Facebook group, Keep the Flame Alive Podcast, and get our special daily games time newsletter. You can sign up for that at flamealivepod.com. Join us again tomorrow for more action from Paris and perhaps some more vacuuming. Please do not forget to tell a friend about the show and hang out with us in the Facebook group because it is hopping with tons of good conversations. Thank you so much for listening, and until tomorrow, keep the flame alive.